Hi everybody, welcome to our discussion on this topic which is uh, capital structure theories. Uh, friends, we have already talked about a couple of uh, theories uh, of which one is uh, uh, the MM theory with taxes and the other one is the traditional theory. We are just taking the extension of those two wherein we say that MM, the Modigliani and Miller argued that actually speaking it does not matter what is the capital structure does a company has right so it says that the capital structure is irrelevant as far as the value of the business is concerned okay uh, there are a set of assumptions and we want to obviously kind of understand those assumptions as well as a part of it but precisely we are saying that as per the irrelevance theory we are saying that the value of a business does not depend upon the capital structure of the business okay so when I say that I'm looking at looking at this argument let's try to compare two businesses uh, with the different uh, capital structures and and see to it can we can we really build this relationship rightly or not okay so let's say there is a company x and there we are company y okay we are given that this company is uh, pure equity and there is no debt on this okay let us say for the sake of it that this company has a total equity capital of Five hundred thousand. Okay, the other company has sixty percent of equity, so let's say three hundred thousand, and the rest is in form of debt. So my total money, total capital at all times comes at five hundred thousand. Okay, let us say that the company either of the companies when they make an income which is your operating income right before bringing any interest costs into that so let's say in either of the cases they make an income of 50,000 because the money constituent is the same okay let us say also that this debt is coming at a rate of 5%. All right, which means that if I calculate my interest, this is nil because there is no debt in this. And here I'm looking at 200,000 into 5% that comes at 10,000, which means that my equity return, my return on equity for company X stands at 50,000 and for company Y stands at 40,000 okay now what we what we want to kind of pick up from here is that since company Y is leveraged there is more debt into that effectively the shareholders land up taking more risks there there would be more expectations for a shareholder to be willing to invest in company why because this amount has to be paid first there's a commitment to be paid right what i'm intend to say is that whatever be the cost of capital for company x so let's say my cost of capital if i said this is coming at 10 percent which is 50 on 500,000. let's say for the sake of argument this comes at 12 percent okay so we are simply putting that due to leverage, due to borrowing, a higher expectation lies as far as company wise equity shareholders is concerned. So when I use this 
you know perspective we are saying that the value of equity with this 10 percent rate shall be 50,000 divided by 10 percent which comes at 500,000 okay right but in this case it shall be 40,000 divided by 12 percent now this will be coming at 333 333 okay right now if I look at the value of debt in the first company's case it is zero and in the second company's case it is 200,000 that of course gives me a total of 533 333 which means that with the change in the capital structure so here is pure equity the value of the business is 500,000 with equity and debt the value of the business is 533333 now of course here we see that a company with a leverage a company with a borrowing is valued at a higher price and that is something which the traditional theory also said or for that matter uh, my mm theory with taxes also said but then here we are not obviously assuming any taxes here precisely what we want to do is test this okay we are saying that assume it like this let's say there's a person a right who holds shares in company Y to the extent of 10%. Okay, so if he holds 10% shares in company Y, here the value of shareholding is, the total shareholding is 333333, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, which means that his investment is worth 33,000, 333 approximately, okay, right, let us say that he decides to, he sells his stake in open market, so he shall receive double three, triple three, okay, right now we are saying since the cost of debt is coming at five percent so he has now a cash of three 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 okay so what it does let us say he borrows another 20,000 at the rate of 10% and as a result of which his total money that he has with himself comes at 5333 okay so the total amount that he now carries the person a carries is 5333 okay now if i say that he is actually speaking having this much money which means he can buy out of this 500,000 more than 10 percent stake with this 5333 okay so when i say this his holding in this company will be a little more than 10 percent okay right so at five three triple three he is able to make a higher stake in the business and now just be cautious about that the return that this company x generate is 10 percent okay which means that his income 
that he is able to generate is 5, 3, triple 3, whatever the stake he has got into 10% again, which gives him 5, triple 3. Okay. But on this borrowing of 20,000, of course, he's supposed to pay interest. Okay. So on this borrowing of 20,000, He's paying interest, not at 10%, just to clarify, it is at 5%, which means that out of this, there would be an interest of 1000, which means that by shifting his stake from company Y to company X, he is able to create a wealth of 433. Okay. So it's a clear arbitrage coming in. So what is happening is what we are trying to say is this company's value is initially higher than the, the other company's value, which is pure equity. But here you would notice because there exists an arbitrage opportunity. So more and more people would like to sell the shares in Y and they would certainly like to buy the shares in X, right? So until what point in time would they continue to do this? They would continue to do this until the value of the two businesses becomes one okay they would continue to do this unless this arbitrage opportunity gets over which essentially means that even though there exists a temporary difference between the two companies values due to the changing capital structure this is not going to sustain for a very long time and as a result of which as a result of which the value of the company, one of the companies would be the same irrespective of their capital structures, right? So this is one calculation that really comes in, in theory, and that is what is MM theory of capital structure irrelevance is all about, okay? Of course, necessarily it needs to be understood what all goes in in these calculations okay there are a lot of assumptions that are involved okay if i were to really take that space now we are saying the first assumption that comes There are no transaction costs, okay? So when you are, whether you're buying shares, whether you are selling shares, whether you are taking loan, whether you are repaying the loan, there would not be any transaction costs involved, right? That is one, one big assumption that is made as far as this particular proposition is concerned. We are also saying that no investor may or can influence the share prices. Okay. So no investor can influence the share prices. And then we are saying that we are talking about a perfect market situation that is everybody has all the information all the buyers and sellers know at all times where the arbitrage lies and obviously that is where it would get really completed straight away we are also saying that it's a free market people are not 
or let's say people are free to purchase and sell securities for that matter we also go to the extent of saying that there is no inclination to debt or equity there's no priority between the two you may choose debt if that offers you a higher return you may choose equity if that offers you a higher return so you are absolutely neutral with respect to your choice of let's say investments we also say by the way right your individual or personal or corporate interest rates of borrowings or lending are the same right so in a way we are saying that if the company is borrowing at 10% or 5% here, we can safely say that uh, the company can also invest at 5%. So the market rates are very, very competitive, very clearly, you know, uh, available to everything. And the biggest amongst all assumptions is that there are no taxes in place. Okay. So when you have this set of these set of let's say assumptions in place it is being argued now it can be certainly suggested that that the capital structures do not matter as far as a business value is concerned or in a different manner we can say that while the cost of debt is lower okay as compared to cost of equity which means as simple as that with a higher proportion of debt right as and when the debt increases kd increases we are saying that the cost of equity increases the financial risks increases to the extent that your cost of overall capital remains intact as in the value of the business doesn't change okay right so one important theory one important observation made by these two economists Modigliani and Mirror and that's what we should be absolutely comfortable knowing at this point in time. Sounds okay? Right? So that's it from my side on this particular lecture. Do subscribe to our channel that is ABC Learning and uh, happy learning. Good day and take care. Bye.